It's time to fire this thing up. Now that we have the Armstrong bracket in place for this boat, I'd really like to maybe get into it. I also want to take a look at this area right here. Remember, this was an I.O. and we now have an outboard, so I have a tremendous amount of storage room down there. And I would like to kind of create something very unique out of fiberglass. But first things first, I need to deal with some non-skid on the swim platform that I'm standing on. This was built by Armstrong Nautical Products. And it's a swim platform slash engine bracket. And I don't want to go with all grip paint and that non-skid. I've shown you that process before, and that's wonderful stuff. But I'd really like to go with a foam type of product called Sea Deck. And we're going to show you a couple of different ways of how to pattern areas on the boat, whether you're a do-it-yourselfer or whether you're a boat builder. Man, we're going to blow you away. We'll naturally get into the installation process of the Sea Deck, and like always, Heck, the program is just going to be packed full of tips. And speaking of tips, here's today's very first one. What I'd like to do today, John, is talk to your audience at home about some simple reminders. Uh, when they're out on the boat for the day, they get back in the boat and the boat won't start. Hey, let me real quick introduce you to this gentleman right over here. This is Captain Kerry Klein. And Kerry owns a very successful sea tow location here in Central Florida. And okay, so here's the setup. A family's out on the water. Maybe they anchor out. They do a little bit of barbecuing. They do some swimming. They pack back up to head home. The boat doesn't start. They're dead in the water. What can somebody do in order to avoid calling a towing service? John, the first thing before you ever leave the dock, you're gonna to wanna to have a sea tow membership. That's gonna go ahead and give you the valuable protection that CETO has to offer while you're on the water. Okay, now, now members do get what's called priority status. Correct. And that means if it's a busy holiday weekend and you break down and you're a member, you're in line first. Okay, if you're a non-member, you're still gonna get service, but you go to the back of the line. That okay? is correct, John. But there's a whole lot more to a CETO membership than just towing right what else do you do for boaters well one of the things that we do is many times people run out of fuel we're going to bring them fuel uh, they'll just pay for the fuel that we're dropping off to them jump starts to come back in prop disentanglements and if we can't get you underway we're going to get you a timely tow home now you also get access to experts expert captains okay 24 7 to where maybe if you quickly want to get back out with your day of fun Okay, you can Correct. call these guys and they can walk you through some issues like the one that we set up today. So they're broke down, somebody calls you, what do you tell that customer? One of the first things we find that the reason the boat doesn't start is many times the red uh, lanyard has been pushed into the off position like I just did right now. Now the boat's dead in the water, it won't start and they can't figure out why. What we have them do, John, is to actually put the lanyard back in place and be able to start the boat right back up. But what if that's not the issue? Well, sometimes too, when they stop the boat, it's already in gear. So they go to start the boat and it won't start. So what we do is have them take the control lever, go into reverse, go into forward, go back into neutral, and then attempt to go ahead and restart the boat. Could there be a fuel issue? Correct. Many times we see that as well. And we then have them go back to the primer bulb and squeeze the primer bulb to see if there is even any fuel coming to the engine. Okay, if that primer bulb is soft, okay, you don't have fuel coming to your engine. You're gonna have to squeeze it multiple times in order for that fuel to come from the fuel tank to go back to the motor. Correct. And you want that primer bulb to become hard. Correct. Okay, this is, this is great advice. And this is all available to CETO members. Correct. And that's not just a regional thing, that is national Na coverage. Nationwide, okay. yes, John. How does somebody become a member? Well, John, that's easy. You can go to CETO's website at CETO.com forward slash shipshape. What does membership run? $169 a year. Let me tell you, that is a lot less money than ever having a single tow out on the water. Captain Kerry, thank you. John, thank you as well. Great advice. Chip Shape TV, the world leader in boat improvement, is being brought to you in part by...
Sunbrella Performance Fabrics. Celebrating 50 years of providing shade from the sun, long-lasting beauty, and protection from the elements. With Sunbrella on board, we've got you covered. By the high-tech, low-maintenance Evinrude E-Tech. Evinrude, spend more time on the water. And by Discount Marine Mart. Trust all your boating needs to the experts. With sales, service, and expert advice. Discount Marine Mart, the official marine retailer of ShipShape TV. Welcome back. This is a real working 28-acre boat yard slash boat building facility residing in Stewart, Florida. It's ShipShape TV's home base. Ideally located, the complex is situated on the shores of the Okeechobee Waterway, which happens to connect the Atlantic Ocean to the Gulf of Mexico. Now once again, here's the founder and host of ShipShape TV, John Graviscus. Thanks, Buck. Like always, great introduction. We've gone ahead and used my brand new Ford F-150 pickup truck in order to snatch the boat out at the boat ramp. We brought it here to the boat shop. And what we want to address this time on ShipShape TV is we would like to add some non-skid traction to the swim platform slash engine bracket. And we do have some obstacles on deck that we need to get around. And thank goodness we have an expert in the field who's going to help us create some type of a template so that we can get some traction down there and that leads us to Jason Gardner. Hey John. How are you Jason? Excellent, thank you. Great to have you back on the program. Good to be back. I am a big believer in your company's product. It's called Sea Deck and I see that we have some examples here on the table. I know that it comes in a lot of colors, it comes in a lot of different patterns and stuff like that, but what is this material made from? This is a closed cell EVA foam. Um, we discovered it when we were looking for an option for the surf and sailboard industry, something that could be used submerged in the water by a, you know, someone who's, who's active, actually moving around on the surface. Is it true that the wetter this material gets, the more traction you get? Absolutely. Now, now it's a foam, so that means it's cushiony, and, and, and that kind of gives comfort okay, out on the boat. So let's talk about how someone might pattern for this bracket, because again, we have some challenges, and I know that you have some kits, these templating kits that you send out to people. What sure. comes in a kit? Um, when you order a kit online, you get a sheet of mylar. Right. It's just clear plastic. It doesn't stretch, nice and, nice and rigid. Okay. You get a little worksheet, some information, a pre-flight checklist to make sure you've done everything right. It's a nice, simple form. Okay. You get the samples you've chosen. When you're online on the website, you can choose five, six, seven, eight different colors you think you might want on your boat. We send it out to you. It has the acrylic-based pressure-sensitive adhesive on the back, just like your finished pad will. So all you got to do is stick this down, and, and you're done. Application is the easiest is, part. That is easy. Check this out right here. This this is good looking, man. This is like a, a teak look with, with a couple of different colors. This might be a choice here for that brand. One of our that, most popular options. I think that would fit the boat sure really, really nice. OK, explain the process of once you get this template kit, how do you go ahead and, and create that template so that you can make something for yep. somebody? Uh, the first thing you do is you unroll your mylar. You take that sheet and you lay it out over your platform or whatever area of the boat you're going to be doing. And you trim it the best you can to get it to lay flat. You take okay. a, scissor, a pair of scissors, a razor. You trim it, you lay it down, you tape it in place so it doesn't move at all. Once you get it in place, uh, take your Sharpie marker, and if there's a molded in non-skid pattern already on your platform, a lot, of the, a lot of the boats already have that in there, or if you have a paint line, you take your marker, you simply trace that outline. Um, what happens if you're not real good at drawing a straight line? That's the biggest thing people fear is, oh, I can't even draw a straight line, there's no way I can template my own boat. It's really simple. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be perfect. Okay. You do the best you can. You follow that line. You uh, capture it the best you can. You send it to us, and we'll do the hard work cleaning it up for you. We'll run it through a, a scanner. We'll digitize your lines. Our CAD guys will straighten those lines up and make a beautiful pad for you. Instead of using Mylar, say, for example, you were going to a boat manufacturing facility or something like that, H how would you capture that digitally? How could you digitize an area so that a boat manufacturer could offer sea deck as an option? Sure. Uh, most of the big boat builders, a lot of them have uh, CAD files already. Their boats have been you know, computer designed. They can just send those files right over to us, CAD files, DFX, whatever they work with, and we'll just make their pads. Never even have to go to the facility. If they don't have that, then we have an electronic digitizer, which you've seen before. So how would, how would you digitize this uh, swim platform here? 
Sure, our tech would come out and he has a unit that looks like a, a surveyor, piece of surveyor equipment. He's got a tripod and a, a computer that sits on top and he takes a little wand and he captures point by point the outline, the contour, hatches, handles, hardware, whatever might be there. Take it back, we put it in our computers and we make a path from that. Stay bolted. Ship Shape TV will be back in a snap. Welcome back. You're tuned into Ship Shape TV, America's favorite boat improvement show. What you're looking at is Merritt Island, Florida, and we are just across the water at Coco Village Marina, and welcome back. We want to now show you how easy it is to install the Sea Deck traction or non-skid pads to a boat, and that kind of leads us to our next expert guest who's right over here. This is Jeff Scheman, and Jeff, I know that you're the production manager at Sea Deck, and I see that we have a couple of different versions here for the Sea Ray. This is a very popular model boat, and I'd like to introduce it to everybody. This is a model year 2010 Sea Ray Sundancer. It's the 350. And I kind of heard through the grapevine that you guys are making these pads for different areas of very popular boats. And it's not just Sea Ray, but what are some of the other brands that you guys already have these things created for where customers can go online and actually get them? Uh, when they go online, we have a huge library. Uh, many boats are on there. Chaparral, Four Winds, uh, Malibu, Mastercraft. What do we have here on the deck? Um, this is our teak finish. Our, we call it our faux teak, storm gray over black. Right. This is our embossed finish, and this is camel over mocha. Okay, I want the camera to get in really, really close here. Don't move anything. Okay. But I want you to take a look at the two different surfaces. And I have a question for you, Jeff. Do you get less traction with one type of look versus the other? No, they are completely identical as far as traction. Can we take everybody through the installation process? Sure. And I think aesthetically that the smoke gray over black is going to look better on the Sea Ray than this mocha and camel, but how would we install this pad to this particular kind of section of the swim platform? Uh, all you want to do is clean, you know, just wipe down the boat if it has moisture or any water on it. Okay, so we want to towel it down. Yep, just towel it down. No big deal. Do we have to prep the surface with anything in particular? Uh, Windex is a great one. Uh, it's, just, it's a glass cleaner that will take any residue or anything off before you install it. And then how do we install a pad? Because on the back side we have a liner kind of covering over the adhesive and that's how it sticks onto the boat is right. with some super strong, super durable adhesive. So, so how do we do that? Just grab a razor blade, right? find your basic center. You just want to score the paper. You don't want to score the foam. Just score the paper, flip it back over, position it exactly where you want it, grab your masking tape, just tape one side that's going to hold it in place so it doesn't shift around on you. Once you have it in place, you just flip it over. Right where the score is, you just peel up that half. And as you put it down, just rub your hand working the air bubbles out as you're laying it down. After it's all laid down, just run your finger along the edge to make sure that adhesive is sticking everywhere. You don't want anything to get under there, so to make sure the adhesive is all the way down, all the way around the pad. Flip this side over, peel that, and then put that down the same way you did here. And just after the pad's completely down, just really rub your finger around it because you really want a good seal around the whole pad. Okay, well we have several pieces that we are going to need to install onto the swim platform, but let's give everybody the before. Okay, this is what the swim platform on the Sea Ray looked like before. This is what it looks like now, and it is a tremendous difference. I don't know if everybody at home remembers Captain Wink Dorsbacher, but Wink used to be the captain of our 57-foot Monterey. And to make a long story short, we just weren't fishing enough for him, so he's now working a different boat, but we're still friends. And he was calling me saying, John, I'm really getting some fatigue at the flybridge when I'm running the boat. Do you guys make any thicker foam pads like anti-fatigue mats? Absolutely. We uh, carry um, online a 15 millimeter helm pad that is a large and small. Could somebody do some measurements and, and make a pattern and send it to you if they wanted a particular special size Absolutely. type of helm pad or something like that? Absolutely. I know people at home are really going to want to get in touch with you. Could you please give everybody the website one last time? It is www.cdeck.com 
and that's S-E-A-D-E-K.com. Welcome back. The light's still on in the tool shed, which means there's still work to do. What do we have, John? What you're looking at is my engine room in the 57-foot Monterey, and I want you to take a look at the flooring, okay? Here is one of those panels, and they're pretty old, and they're starting to disintegrate. These are plywood, 3 8 inch. And I would like to reconfigure things down there for that floor so it's aesthetically pleasing and we have some strength to support the weight. You literally have to crawl on your hands and knees to get through the engine room. And that leads us to this gentleman right over here, really good friend of mine. This is Ben Gujan. And Ben is with West System. And Ben, what could we kind of do to make some new flooring in that engine room? Well, the neat thing about working with wood and epoxy is you can really do build anything that you want. And so with these, we modified the new panels from the originals a little bit um, for a little bit better symmetry, and we removed some stuff in the old boat. But what we're going to do is we are going to take the new panels. What happened here is the wood rotted because it wasn't encapsulated in epoxy. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to encapsulate it using our 105 resin with 206 hardener. Now, remember, this is a very simple system. One pump of resin to one pump of hardener. So you can't mess that up. Can't mess that up. You mix it together, we've got a catalyst, we've got a resin, and, and we apply that to all the sides of the wood, right? Yes, we're gonna fully encapsulate the piece of epoxy so mo no moisture goes in, no moisture goes out. Okay, now these pieces of plywood are relatively thin, 3 8 inch. My question to you, Ben, is when you add epoxy to wood, does it strengthen the wood? Does it give it more load-bearing capabilities? No, we put the epoxy on the wood for moisture exclusion. In order to do that, we are going to use some surf cloth. This is our 745 12-ounce cloth, and we're going to put a layer of this on the top of the panel and a layer of this on the bottom of the panel. Now, naturally, we're going to have to wet out that surf cloth with the West System epoxy and the catalyst. Okay, and a little trick here is to get the air bubbles out, you might want to invest in a fiberglass roller, okay, to roll those things out. We want everything to lay flat. But again, we're going to be crawling through this engine room, okay, and this does have a pattern to it. Is there anything that we could do to fill in the weave pattern of the surfboard cloth? Yeah, John, we have a few options here. We can either fill it again with our 105, 206, but if you do that, it'll take a, a couple of coats to completely fill that weave. But if we add some of our 410 Microlite fairing filler into that epoxy in about a syrup or ketchup type consistency, we can fill the weave in one shot because it's a little bit thicker. Well, this product sands very, very easily. Okay. So once it's completely cured, we just sand it smooth and you're ready for paint. I want these pieces of plywood, I want this, this flooring to really look aesthetically pleasing down in that engine room. I want to impress people, okay? And what's cool about the West System epoxy is it's compatible with some very popular marine paints out there like All Grip. And if you're going to be using All Grip and you want it to look aesthetically pleasing, you might want to start off with what's called their high build primer. And the trick with high build primer, Ben, is you don't want to wait more than like 24 hours to sand it. It will sand like butter at that 24 hour mark, but after it, it does get a little bit more challenging to sand. Now, once it is sanded, we can come back with our 545 finish primer and we sand that and we come back with our paint. Now here's the difference, okay? Take a look at the original condition of the flooring in the engine room on the Monterey, okay? Pretty nasty. Here's the result of all of our hard work. And Ben, your team, your technicians really give boaters free, wonderful advice. How do people get to you? How do they get your information? And also, where can they buy the West System? Well, they can call us anytime for technical support or check us out at westsystem.com. Dude, you rock. One of the great things about boating is that tropical tan that your skin can get when exposed to sunlight. However, with too much exposure, it's possible to become sunburned. Hi, I'm Bill McDaniel with Glen Raven Custom Fabrics, the makers of Sunbrella. And just like air skin, your gauges, bezels, and any expensive marine electronics that you may have on your dash area, if left unprotected, can get absolutely destroyed with too much exposure to direct or indirect sunlight. So, how do we prolong their beauty and lifespan? Simple. Here's how it's done. Contact your local canvas shop, have them come out where you keep the boat, and they'll pull a pattern for the area that you'll want covered and protected. They'll then take that pattern back to their shop and overlay it on a roll of sunbrella and cut the shape with a special heated electronic knife. Now, the great thing about this idea is that when you have your sunbrella dash cover made, you can actually have it made from the same color fabric as 
is used on your T-top or, or bimini top or whatever shade might be on the boat. What this gives you is style, color, and function. Now, back at the canvas shop, your fabricator will have to sew all the edges, incorporate fasteners in the fabric, then at your boat, attach some type of either snap or other popular fastener to your dash. Once installed, you'll be completely protected anytime your boat is not in use and being stored. For more information on Sunbrella, where to find a local canvas shop, or for color selection, log on to sunbrella.com forward slash shipshape. That's right, our project today is pretty much complete, which means we're now back on the water with John. Take a look at the top side of our Armstrong bracket prior to us putting on the sea deck. And now take a look at the finished result. Welcome back. We again have Jason Gardner on the program from Sea Deck. And Jason, just about a half hour ago, you came to the shop.